Welcome to the program today. My name is Mondo Gonzalez here with uh, a good friend and special guest, Ellie Marzulli. Always good to have Great you. Great to be here, Mondo. Absolutely. And we, we are going to be covering a very interesting topic. But before we do, I just want to give you a just a personal uh, update on Gary. Gary, uh, for those of you who might not have heard, uh, Gary had a pacemaker surgery back in February, late February. And since then, he has been recovering very well. Uh, he's been going in and doing uh, physical therapy as well as some other things in, in order to recover. Uh, we actually saw him here in the office this week, we recorded a little program with him. So he is looking forward to coming back as soon as he can. It's totally in his hands. And so as he feels up to it, he's gonna continue to make his way. He said he's excited to do some Bible studies with us in the book of Revelation. So we really look forward to it. So I'll, I'll we say that to say, we certainly appreciate your prayers for him. I know he does. And um, some of you I know don't have internet access or maybe don't see us on our YouTube channel, but he has, uh, been over there a few times and he just wants to thank everybody for all the prayers and the, the good wishes and so it's exciting to see him coming back. Absolutely wonderful. Yeah. So on this topic LA you know one of the things that we're going to talk about is um, this is I imagine in a personal way you have felt very vindicated lately because <laughs> there's been um, so much coming out if you haven't been paying attention and, and maybe seeing this um, the whole idea of UFO disclosure you know LA is going to talk a little bit about that but we're going to talk a little bit about why that's important, why it's important for every single Christian to be aware of these things, uh, why it's important if we're seeking to plant seeds and to evangelize uh, those that um, are currently don't know the Lord, or even just educating. Because, LA, before we get into that, let, um, in the sense, we, we talked about this on a separate program, young people. Mm -hmm. Young people are inundated with social media, mm -hmm. with the movies, mm -hmm. all of these other things. And our goal, your goal, is to provide a biblical worldview for them mm -hmm. uh, because m many times we're not picking on the church, but many times pastors, youth pastors, even parents aren't giving their kids a biblical worldview for these somewhat previous taboo topics. Well, if, if we just look at ancient aliens, for an example, that's been, I was on actually the first two seasons of that. So that's been going on for over 10 years now. And I know that <clears throat> we get emails from people from, from young men in their 20s who latch on to our work, maybe see a DVD, see me speaking about UFOs and something, and I'll flip their paradigm. And they'll write me and say, you know, LA, I, I used to watch Ancient Aliens and I totally believe in the whole Von Daniken idea <clears throat> that we were visited thousands of years ago by an advanced race of extraterrestrials who built all these monuments. But, but your series, on the Trail of a Nephilim, and your series on UFOs, all of a sudden, you know, and I'm, I'm coming back to the Bible and I'm looking at it in a totally different way. That's what we want to hear. That's why we do what we do. That makes it all worth it. Yeah. Let's talk about the deception. We, we often talk about 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Yeah. Talk about that and how it connects when, to this. When they show up, and they will show up at some point. Now people go, LA, how many rungs of the ladder are there? And we'll get into that in a little bit. Mm -hmm. the, the disclosure ladder. Right now we're on rung number eight. I'm winning your appetite, so stay with us. Mm -hmm. We'll get into that. So maybe it's 20, 25 rungs. We don't know. Mm -hmm. We have no idea. But at some point, they will show up. And what I mean by that, the mile-wide craft that people have seen. Mile-wide craft? Yeah, mile-wide craft. Independence Day movie. Well, I mean, back, yeah. Ricky Sorrell, whom I interviewed probably a decade ago, um, he saw a mile-wide craft. He was out deer hunting, okay? And mm -hmm. he's out deer hunting on, on New Year's Day, and he's caught in some brambles, and he steps back like this, and he looks up, and there this thing is. It's overhead, he can't see one end from the other. And at one point he thinks about, well, maybe I should shoot it. And then he thought, but <laughs> he didn't do it. The thing just kind of moves very slowly, noiselessly, away at an angle, and then takes off. Two minutes later, three or four F-18s go screaming by. So when they show up in a mile wide craft, and it just hovers. And right now we're seeing the cat and mouse game. We're seeing the tic-tac shape object that, that was rung number one on the disclosure ladder on Tucker Carlson. So we see that. Uh, we get clips of it. We hear uh, the, the Freedom of Information Act and all these different things are leaking out. But when they actually show up, and, and don't go away, just sit there, over some city, or maybe it's multiple cities, everything changes. Look, folks, I can't stress it enough. I'm, I'm the crazy guy who for the last, you know, 25 years have been flailing my arms. You know, the sky is falling, the sky is, well, guess what? It's happening now. So maybe I'm not so crazy. Maybe, and I'm, I'm boasting here, and I'm patting myself on the back, so 
bear with me, but maybe the Lord has set me up for such a time as this. And I was, I was trained, if I can use that word, in the new age. So I've been on both sides of the aisle. I was a new ager. I believed in the whole panspermia idea, the whole von donican ask if I can use that term, that we were seated here by an advanced race of extraterrestrials. That is the lie, which completely is contradictory to what we believe as Christians, that Jesus spoke everything into existence and created every, everything, and he holds all things together. That's what we believe as Christians. So we either believe that, or we believe in panspermia, or the idea that we were seated here by an advanced race of extraterrestrials. Mm -hmm. And so when they show up, they're going to tell us that we created all life on this planet. We genetically manipulated early man. We started the world's earliest civilizations and all the religions of the world were started by us. These were avatars that we sent to try to raise your consciousness. And people are just gonna, this is what the new age believes in already, basically. The whole idea of the cycle of reincarnation, of avatars, of God men, of the gods coming down. And when you watch Ancient Aliens every Friday, and I know I'm bagging on those, I know some of those guys. I've interviewed them and they're all good people. I'm not you know, condemning them, they have a right to believe what they want to believe, but I have a right to believe what I want to believe. They talk about, you know, the, the gods came down and they did this and they bestowed knowledge to mankind. True, I agree. But what gods are they talking about? All you have to do to flip their whole paradigm is go, instead of calling them the gods or the extraterrestrials, flip it to fallen angels. Mm -hmm. Because we know that that's exactly what happened. The fallen angels came on the earth. Read the book of Enoch. Read the book of Enoch. And everything... That's the springboard, and everything just changes from that, I, I happens think it, from that. It's interesting, too, because you know, we often talk about the Genesis 6 narrative uh, as being you know, the sons of God coming down and, and to the earth and, and causing trouble. Uh, but I think even uh, more uh, I think pertinent in, in that regard is the interpretation that we see of that in 2 Peter chapter 2, as well as the, the book of Jude. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting that if you look at both of those books, uh, Second Peter and Jude, both, they are both about false teachers. Mm -hmm. They're about false teaching. And so, but right there in the midst of Jude, he's talking about these teachers that have crept in and blah, blah, blah. And then Peter does the same thing. And then all of a sudden, they're talking about these angels. Yeah. And, but it's in the context of false teaching. And so you, you see there, you can't, you can't escape the fact that these fallen uh, angelic beings, however you want to lay them, the sons of God, whatever, um, they had a teaching ministry, mm -hmm. which is why Jude and Peter are connecting them to the false teachers that were coming, as well as the ones that were in Jude's day. They were bringing heresy. They were bringing uh, false understandings, false knowledge, all these lies. And, they, and the, both of them say, hey, don't you worry, church. These false teachers are going to get their judgment, just like those other false teachers did back then. So the context There's is extremely link. powerful. Yeah. No, I, I, I concur. Uh, it, it's already it's already all around us. Uh, the Christian worldview is not no longer the dominant worldview. People yeah. are flocking out of the churches. People are leaving the church in droves. Why? It's the same thing every every Sunday. And I, I'm all for teaching of the word, but I'm also all for just sitting silently before the Lord and see what He wants to do. Yeah. Let the Holy Spirit come in like the Book of Acts. Yeah. So we can't do that because of X, Y, and Z. Well, why? You know, what is it going to take before we just wait on Him? Wait on the Lord, Psalm 34. Yeah. You know, just, just wait on the Lord. Well, I have a, a lot of questions that I want to get to, but we're going to take a little break here so that you can see how you can get our magazine. I mean, uh, L.A. has written for our magazine. He certainly will again. And we address so many of these current prophetic issues. Uh, you will not find a, another magazine like this, mm -hmm. in, in really, in all the world. Beautiful, beautifully produced. You can get it in print uh, as well as digital. So take a listen. We have a very special subscription offer for you today for your gift of $50 or more to support the worldwide outreach of Prophecy Watchers. You can subscribe to either the digital version or the print version of our magazine. And here's the best part. In addition to receiving 12 monthly issues of the magazine, this offer comes with a fantastic bonus. Eight DVDs from some of the leading prophecy experts in the world today. Eight DVDs plus 12 issues of the magazine represents a $200 value but it's available today for your gift of just $50 or more to support the work of Prophecy Watchers. This offer is available anywhere in the USA and will ship both the magazine and the DVDs absolutely free. Don't wait or hesitate. Call the toll-free number on your screen 
or visit our online bookstore at prophecywatchers.tv to take advantage of this limited time offer. Looking at the future through the lens of Bible prophecy is the entire focus of this ministry. We're motivated like never before by our desire to tell the world that Jesus is the only answer for these troubling times. And we do believe that He's coming back very soon, just as He promised. Partner with us today. Help us take God's message of salvation through Jesus Christ to the whole world. Well, before the break, L.A., um, we, we're just kind of giving the, the background and the foundations for why uh, every single Christian um, should participate in at least getting a cursory understanding. We're not saying that this is more important than uh, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. I mean, no. that, that, is the, that is the essential. But these are great opportunities. These are great conversation starters to understand to have a biblical worldview and in order to evangelize. And so we kind of share that. Um, you got a new video coming out, mm -hmm. a new film you've been working on. Mm -hmm. But before you talk about that, kind of talk about the, the continuity of this new series that you've been uh, working well, on. Well, with, with, with the disclosure that happened in 2017, uh, the Lord sort of redirected my steps. And I went back to the very first film that I had ever created, apart from our Watcher series with the late Richard Shaw, uh, and it was called, in their own words, UFOs are real. And I re-edited the film. I went back and it was like an hour and a half. It was my first film, and so I re-edited it. So it's, and I remember watching, watching it and, and just changing everything and trying to make it you know, more poignant, more hard hitting, uh, to try to get, the, to communicate to the viewer that this phenomenon is real burgeoning and not going away. And I filmed it in 2016. This is before the first rung of the disclosure ladder happened, which was David Fravor yeah, on say, Tucker Carlson. Say that, we're, I, I will. I want to do it. No, thoroughly, I will. Yeah. I get that. But that was the first rung, mm -hmm. and it was it was before that. And it's interesting that that Paul McGuire. I asked him on film, on camera, when do you think we're going to see disclosure? And he said, Well, maybe the late, latter part of 2017, but certainly by the end of 2017. Uh -huh. He states that in the film on the record. I mean, that's unbelievable, right? He knew, and so. All this is unraveling, and, and I have been filming uh, even during COVID. So now we've got, uh, we're about to release number two. Three, four, five, six, and possibly seven are already in the can. Um, you're in uh, some of these things mm -hmm. too, um, and so is Gary Stearman. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, we, we've got everything on, on film. We're now in post-production and, and trying to get them out as fast as possible. My, my goal is to get at least three, four, five, out by the end of the year and maybe even six which is a lot of work but we're just we're on it like white on rice yeah i mean when you think about what's going on and, and one of the reasons you know just in my personal conversations uh, with ula is um the let's talk about these these wrongs which you have brought okay. up because it seems to be i mean we you and i talked just just a few weeks ago and, and even since then uh we have more rungs on the ladder because this is this is what what la is calling the the UFO disclosure ladder, and there's different things. L give a brief synopsis of what has happened, which has precipitated and quickened your your passion and your filming to get some of these things out to equip people. Yeah, well, the first rung, uh, I'm watching Tucker Carlson, uh, and this is before the fire where, where we would sit and watch Tucker in California. Mm -hmm. The fire wiped us out, so we moved to Oklahoma, and now we're back in California. Mm -hmm. But it really disrupted everything. So it's 2017, it's December, watching Tucker Carlson. And Tucker starts off, you know, UFOs used to be the stuff of tinfoil hat and conspiracy theorists, but maybe we shouldn't think that way anymore. I'm kind of going like, where is he mm -hmm. going with mm -hmm. this? This is my wheelhouse yeah. all day long. So I'm like on the edge of my seat. And he continues, Commander David Favor was a former F-18 pilot who had an experience, an encounter, as it were, with a tic-tac-shaped object over the Pacific Ocean. Commander David Favor joins us now. And I'm just going like, what? What am I watching? Yeah, and what am I watching? So it's a triptych. They've got, they've got Tucker here, Favor, Commander David Favor in the middle, and over here, at one time, classified footage. Somehow somebody got it. It was deliberate, obviously, in my opinion. Deliberately released. And, and they're showing the film and Commander David Favor is talking about his encounter with the tic tac shape UFO, no rotor wash. Uh, and the bottom line on this, national TV, Tucker Carlson, Tucker asked him, what do you think this was? And Favor looks right at the camera, the camera pans in on him and goes, whatever this was, was not from this earth. And I just, I figured this is it. 
my phone will ring, mm -hmm. you know, emails, oh my gosh, brace yourself, Peggy, this is it. Mm -hmm. It's going to be an onslaught. That's what you've been <clears throat> predicting for Predicting for mm -hmm. forever, right? First rung on the disclosure ladder. Second rung on the disclosure ladder, Louisa was on the once again on Tucker Carlson. And there's an exchange, and actually I show the exchange in the second film. I show the little clip, fair use. So I show that exchange. And Luis Elizondo states on the record with Tucker Carlson that we have in our possession metal, metal from crashed UFOs. <laughs> it's like, what? And this happens, you know, Fravor was 2017 in December. So a couple of months later, there's Luis Elizondo. I don't know the precise date, but shortly thereafter, we've got crashed metal. Well, a little while after that, that's the second rung. The third rung on the ladder, Christopher Mellon, former CIA guy, once again on Tucker Carlson, stating on the record that they've tested the metal and it has isotopes not from this earth. So, what, I mean, just that alone should make everybody sit up and go, wow. And before I continue the fourth ladder, well, let me go to the fourth ladder. The Pentagon, the fourth rung on the ladder. The Pentagon then comes out and states that we have off-world vehicles not made on this earth. All four vehicles in our possession not made on this earth. And nobody, I mean, you would think every single pastor on the planet would be going, here it is, it's the coming great deception, you know, and, and it begs the question, off-world vehicles not made, up. pray tell, where are they made? And more importantly, who's piloting these things? And who's behind the driver's seat? Where, where did they mine these? I mean, you can find that article, it's July of 2020 on Fox News, the off-world, I mean, you can find it there, so this isn't, this isn't crackpot we're, we're not stuff. We're not making this we're up. We're not making it up. Huh? And, and why is it on Tucker Carlson? Why did they show it on Fox News? Because they know that their base, their audience, is predominantly conservative Christians. So in my opinion, it's a managed agenda, as the late Chuck Messer would say. It's a managed agenda with an end game, and they're testing the waters. <clears throat> What's the reaction from the Christian community? What will they say? It's flatlined. It's flatlined. And that's a disgrace. That's a total disgrace. Now, some of us are standing up, like this program, mm -hmm. and yours truly, others, yeah. Derek Gilbert, Josh Beck, there's Tom others, Horn. Yeah, sure. I mean, there's others that are standing up. In general, the it, church it's flat this line. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that's the fourth rung of a disclosure ladder. And the reason why they're doing it on Fox News, in my opinion, is just to see what the reaction is. Well, let's test the waters. You know, let's, let's see what those crazy Christians will do. Yep. Let's go to the next rung. And so here we are. That's the fourth rung. The fifth rung on the disclosure ladder is when uh, they released a report uh, basically stating uh, that out of 100, the Pentagon released, the government released this, that of 143 sightings, 142, they didn't know what they were. So as I talked about this last time you we were here, if you look up, you know, uh, bovine flatulence effects on, on, you know, greenhouse gases, it's like a thousand pages on bovine flatulence. We get nine pages. Yeah on UFOs. Again, you, you can look this up. It's so I'm not making this June stuff 25th, up. June 25th, 2021, we were all waiting for it because some of the other previous stuff had precipitated the government and, and the, the Congress to say, we want to report within yeah. six months, which just came yeah, out. Yeah, June. and so they, they come out with a goofy report and we don't know what 142, they know exactly who it is and what there is they're dealing with. That's another conversation. But they admitted, this, but is, they admit, where, they this admit. is important because they admitted the fifth rung that um, you have these instances which are now UAPs, yeah. um, and they can't identify them, and they do, they do propose a security threat, which caused them then to- It's all about to, the threat. They instituted, it's about the threat. They instituted now some, uh, some offices that yeah. they're looking in order to share information, blah, right. blah, blah. Let's, let's and that's what we really get into on, on UFO number two. Francisco Carrera, who is one of, one of, the, one of our mainstays, um, secular guy, but he's been a UFO researcher. He's head of Exopolitics Portugal, and he does a, a marvelous job, and he talks about the threat. He talks about that in the film. It's all about the threat. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's fascinating. So the sixth rung is when NASA, never a straight answer, um, <clears throat> goes out and hires theologians because they want to find out how are we going to couch this when they show up. Now this, now just so you know, this was years ago, but yet the, it kind of came to the surface recently, mm -hmm. and so, so go on. This, this I think is, is, is well, I mean, amazing. the idea that, you know, the Pope talked about this or, and, and, and Father Cosmo, I can't pronounce the last name, but he was um, Monsignor mm -hmm. Cosmoglano or something like mm -hmm. that, um, basically, basically stated that if they show up, we would want to baptize them. 
you know, which is absolutely, um, if, if aliens showed up, we would preach the gospel and baptize them. So NASA has now hired um, a group of theologians, allegedly. From Princeton, I think it was. Yeah, uh, to talk about the theological implications when E.T. shows up. That's number six. So they're looking, so just so you know, they're looking to theologians to d do support, not support groups, but research groups to find out what would the average Christian say? Because this came up, I don't know, probably 50 years ago uh, as well, that the, the Christian world, which was, we were more Judeo-Christian back then, uh, the world would freak out. So they're like, let's revisit that and see if these theologians... Let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. And of course, they're going to couch it in some way that will be acceptable to the prevailing paradigm that they pr created all life on this planet. They are our progenitors and... You know, we, we, they, they were the gods in the Old Testament. And, and, and it's interesting, would the average, I mean, if you're a, a very biblically astute person, you, uh, and you go to church or whatever, you're going to go, no, nope, God created everything. But in the average church today, mm -mm. they aren't biblically astute. There's a lot of syncretism, pluralism going on. For them, this idea of progressive creation, you know, theistic evolution, you it, name it's it. All, it's all acceptable. It's, yeah, they're going to be like, oh, and then they have the Catholic Church, which really is part of a lot of their, they, they've embraced a lot of the evolutionary model. They come and they go, well, hey, then we need to baptize them. And maybe they have other information and maybe they can enlighten us about Jesus and tell uh -huh. us things that we don't already know. And maybe they can correct us and correct us if we have bad biblical thinking. I remember hearing that going, what? It's shocking. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's beyond shocking. This is the coming great deception. So the seventh rung of the disclosure ladder happened fairly recently, and we talked about this last time I was here. Uh, the, the Freedom of Information Act released information. Um, <laughs> only took five years to pry that out of yeah. the government's hand. But that, that women who are taken aboard UFOs, there are, they become pregnant. Not all of them. But there's pregnancies. Unaccounted for pregnancies. Unaccounted and abductions. For pregnancies. And, that and was abductions. in there too, as well as burns so, and other injuries. So women are being abducted against their will. They find themselves pregnant. We've interviewed people. It's not in this film, but it will be in other films. We've already interviewed women who have been taken, abducted, and in the first trimester. Were pregnant, right? Impregnated. They know they were pregnant, and, and the, usually before the third month, they're re-abducted, and the, and the baby is taken from them, and they think they've miscarriage, and they go to the OBG. We saw the heartbeat. We know it was there. Are you sure you, you, know, you didn't miscarriage? What's going on? And it's obviously very traumatic. And then, of course, years later, um, usually four to five, but it can be longer than that, they're reintroduced to their child. And they know instantly, the mother knows instantly that this, it's mine, but it doesn't look human. Now, I realize for some of you that that's a huge stretch, but your government, your government has told you that women are being impregnated and becoming pregnated, and becoming pregnant by these entities. Jesus warns us it'll be like the days of Noah when he returns. So that's rung number seven. Hold, rung number eight. Hold, yeah. hold number eight because we're going to take a little break here because these, as you can see, these are uh, really uh, extremely fascinating, interesting topics uh, that need a biblical answer. And we're going to take a little break here so you can see how you can get uh, L.A.'s film on this exact topic. UFOs are in the news again, leaving many people wondering what exactly is going on behind the scenes and what we're not being told. What are we to think when our own government claims they have no idea what these high-speed crafts are or where they've come from? Does the Bible have answers? We don't expect to see a mile-wide UFO craft anytime soon. We believe and teach the pre-tribulation rapture a time when God supernaturally removes believers in Jesus from this planet to our home in heaven right before the tribulation begins. How will the world explain the disappearance of millions of people? Could this deceitful alien explanation be the cover story for the rapture? And who wouldn't believe it? Hollywood has prepared us for that grand event. L.A. Marzulli's book, UFO Disclosure, and two DVDs by the same name, Tear the cover off the UFO mystery. Inside, you'll find interviews with people who've had UFO encounters, conversations with people who've been abducted, and fearful ranchers who've lost dozens of heads of cattle to this mysterious cattle mutilation phenomenon. These three products are available individually for your gift of $25 or more, with shipping included anywhere in the USA. When you purchase all three of LA's resources on UFOs, we'll include a special bonus, a free copy of Rescued by an Angel, 
a one-of-a-kind DVD that shares the five-hour UFO encounter Gary Stearman had over the skies of Texas in 1969. The UFO cover-up package is discounted and available for your gift of $60 or more to support the Television Ministry of Prophecy Watchers. Just call the toll-free number on your screen 24-7 or visit our online bookstore and we'll get LA's unique research on its way to you. Why are we talking about such bizarre things? Our mission is to warn people about what is coming upon our world, perhaps very soon. Sharing the truth of God's free gift of salvation through Jesus Christ and keeping people out of the tribulation is why Prophecy Watchers exists. Will you help us today? So, Ali, before the film, I'm pretty sorry I kind of cut you off, but we, the, the, this, this new film that you're doing, let's talk about the final rung of the ladder, which okay. certainly you're going to address. Yeah, number eight would be just a couple of weeks ago on Tucker Carlson again, and I never thought they would go here, but they're there. They're there. They had two butchers, professional butchers, guys that, you know, have been trained up and they're brothers and they're professionals and they know how to butcher a steer. And it's not, you know, and they're looking at cattle mutilations going, time out. You know, this is whoever's doing this is doing it with surgical precision. Um, this, this is just so you, I mean, this, this is not make believe. We're not making this up. The FBI actually, um, based on thousands of cattle mutilation reports, you know, going back to the 70s and 80s, the FBI has actually researched all this. You can go online and get their official reports. So, I mean, you know, as we're wrapping it up here, I mean, we, we, we have this, this eighth rung, which again is evidence of the supernatural. I mean, that's the things it, that you're it's discussing. It's got the supernatural all over. And so, so in that sense, um, let's, let's kind of finalize here two things. Why is this important and what can and should Christians do about it? Why it's important is because this is what's manifesting. If this wasn't manifesting, I'd be looking for what is manifesting. Um, let no one deceive you. Satan comes with all signs and lying wonders. We read those scriptures, but do we really believe them? Even the elect would be deceived if that were possible. Well, the elect ain't getting deceived. We're, we're, we're flailing our arms wildly, trying to warn a sleepy church that this is the coming great deception. You know, I've, I've started this new, um, uh, it's, on, it's on my YouTube channel, and it's called Supernatural Confrontations. And we have people that have had experiences like this and I, I interview them on a Zoom chat, and it's riveting. It's gut-wrenching, it's visceral, some of this stuff. And people are, are flocking to this channel because there's a platform. They can talk about the experience, mm -hmm. and other people go, wow, that and happened to me too. And there's no ridicule, and there's no you know, making fun of or any of that nonsense, and we fit in there here. So the Lord's redirecting our steps that way too. Yeah. You know, Eli, I appreciate your time. Thank you, Mondo. Always great to be here. Yeah, and for those of you who's watching, at the end of the day, you know, the goal is ultimately, and as always, to point people back to the gospel, to the gospel of Jesus Christ, to be saved, that the word of God is true. It, it, it is our um, infallible rule for understanding all the things that we can in the universe. God hasn't given us all things, all answers, but he has given us enough in order to point people back to him. So we appreciate you watching. We are going to continue to uh, be uh, handling some of the, these cutting edge topics in order to equip people. And we're going to be watching. These are all prophetic events. And appreciate you watching as well. And, uh, you know, again, I, I never want to apologize for asking for your prayers, for all the work that we're doing here. And we will see you next time.